Good evening, friends. Welcome to Counseling Moments of Hope, um, our first session, and so we're excited. As you can see, my wonderful husband is not with me tonight, but next week um, he will be, and so I know you'll be blessed by having him. Um, so tonight our topic is anxiety, and I just want to pray in the beginning and we'll get started, all right? Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we thank you for each one listening in tonight. Lord, we know that there will be some of our counseling staff that will be listening in. There will be others that have family members that are dealing with this topic with anxiety. And there will also be those that deal with it themselves, God, that are walking that journey. And so, Father, tonight we pray that your Holy Spirit would rest upon this time together. And Father, that it would be fruitful and profitable for each one, their heart, their lives, their journey. God, we submit ourselves to you, Lord, tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, I'm so glad that you joined us tonight. Um, well, as a people, we're in an extreme time in our nation, well, in our world. COVID-19 has stopped us, kind of stopped the way we live our lives. It's kind of forced us into our homes together day after day. And honestly, for many, it has enhanced uh, worry and fear and anxiety. And I thought it would be important if I just read you something about understanding fear, worry, and anxiety. Um, this says they aren't interchangeable. The primary difference between fear and anxiety is the time frame. Fear is an emotional response to a real or perceived immediate threat, while anxiety is an emotional response to a real or perceived future threat. Fear is a warning system that alerts us to danger right now, while anxiety is a warning system of impending danger. Related to anxiety is worry, a repetitive pattern of thoughts and mental images that cause us to focus on our anxiety and fear. Um, I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about King David. I've been studying in Psalms and uh, I'm about halfway through uh, the, the book of Psalms and in so many of the passages I see the evidence of that uh, fear and anxiety were constant companions of King David and yet we see how he dealt with it and in Psalm 139, 23, uh, very familiar to us, he writes, search me God and know my heart, test me and know my anxious thoughts. So we've prepared for you a handout that you can actually um, email and request or call our office, the Counseling Center direct line again, 760-349-1600, and you will hear our assistant, uh, Bridget, her lovely voice, and she will help you. She will send this exercise out to you. And so in this exercise, we're identifying the source. What are the sources of our anxiety? And so we follow David's lead by asking God to test us as we fill in the blanks in these following five sentences. I'm gonna read those real quick. What I need most is blank. You fill in the blank. What I want most is blank. What I most want to avoid is blank. What I feel most powerless about is blank. And what I'm most concerned will happen is blank. The way you answer those questions likely reveals your source or sources of anxiety. We feel anxious we won't get what we need or want, or that we'll get what we don't want or can't avoid. We also become anxious about concerns that make us feel small or helpless or lacking control. And then there's another exercise on this same sheet and it's called the circle exercise. So what you're gonna do is on a separate piece of paper, you're gonna list all those things that make you anxious, either about yourself or even in our present circumstance in, in our country. And then you're gonna classify your anxieties. So 
then on another sheet of paper on the back of that same one you had you're going to draw a large circle and then inside the large circle you're going to draw a smaller circle in the smaller circle you're going to write down the items from your list that you just accumulated that you can do something about the things that you have the ability to take action on yourself in the larger circle you're going to write down the things that you cannot control or affect the items in the small circle should be things you can with god's help do something about today or the near future the ones in the larger circle are not for you they're for god either god has given us the capacity to handle the thing that we feel is a future threat or he desires us to put our trust in him and how to handle it the dictionary says that anxiety is a feeling of worry or nervousness or unease typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome and the psychiatry dictionary says it is a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension typically with compulsive behavior or panic attacks and i i like statistics and i think they're important in the study of, of different things and so uh, the stats on anxiety says anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the u.s affecting 40 million adults in the united states age 18 and older anxiety disorders are highly treatable but yet it tells us that only 36.9 percent of those suffering actually receive treatment and i would say that's that's a prayer point you know the word of god is so important to us and it speaks truth to us and one thing that we've also done and you can request this through our office is um we just termed it worry and anxiety bible verses and so it's a list of scripture that will help you and i'm just going to read just a few um, isaiah 41 10 i love this so do not fear for i am with you do not be dismayed for i am your god i will strengthen you and help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand that's so powerful and then in Matthew 6, 25 through 34, I have that listed, but I'm just gonna read uh, verses 25, 26, and this is Jesus. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And friends, that's a question that we all need to answer to ourselves. Do I really believe that I'm more valuable than the birds of the air? Do I truly believe, and in that moment of even an anxiety attack, are, are those my thoughts? that I really believe that I'm more valuable than the birds of the air. I also wanted to read because trust is such an important part of even a healing process as we journey through this, this thing called anxiety. And Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and at First Assembly of God in Victorville, Pastor John, our lead pastor, these are two of his very favorite verses. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Amazing, amazing. There are so many verses here and so please request that through our office also. Those are both free of charge, of course. Well, what actually happens when someone begins to not just have anxiety, but what we would term as an anxiety attack, an actual attack? 
Well, there are physical symptoms, and some of those are an increased heart rate, a feeling of lightheadedness, like you're going to faint, um, even hyperventilate. And so what do you need to do? Well, I like to say the three R's. And the first one is reset. Reset. Reset what, Pastor Glenn? Reset your mind. What are you thinking at that moment? You're, in, you're starting in to have an attack. You feel an increased heart rate. You, you feel lightheaded. You're, you're feeling fear. You're feeling worry. What do you do? You reset your mind. What are you believing at that moment? What is in your mind? Reset your mind, your thoughts. And then the next one is refocus. Refocus. What is true? What is true? You need to focus on what is true. What brings you joy? What is right? What is pure? What is lovely? As in Romans. God loves you. Refocus. And then the last one is restore. You begin thanking God for who he is. Thank you, Father. Thank you for who you is. Thank you that, that you love me. And of course, you are breathing in and breathing out. You need oxygen to your brain. And so you need to be breathing in as you start to reset your mind and your thoughts, as you then refocus on who God is and what is true and what is right. And then to restore, you're breathing in, breathing out, and you're thanking God that you have life and breath and that things are as well as they are and that God loves you and he's crazy about you. And you know, folks, I, I just want to also give you a couple of verses that are just like life verses to me and um, both in Old Testament. And so Deuteronomy 31.8, it is the Lord himself, it is God himself, that goes ahead of you. And the verse says, so do not fear and do not be dismayed because the Lord himself goes ahead of you. The Lord God himself went ahead of us today before we were recording this, before we came to you today. The Lord himself goes ahead of you for tomorrow. We don't need to worry about tomorrow. He's here today, he'll be there tomorrow. He's going ahead of you. That's beautiful. That brings me such reassurance and confidence and security. And then Zephaniah 317 is absolutely one of my favorite verses. And it says, the Lord your God is in your midst. Now I could just stop there. But when I think about the Lord is in my midst, and then he will quiet my heart with his love. He's mighty to save and he dances over us with singing. What is better than that? And so if you are in the start of an anxiety attack and you can remember at that moment to reset your mind on Zephaniah 317 and you can say, the Lord my God is in my midst. You are not in that place by yourself. You are not having that attack by yourself. He is in your midst and he is mighty to save. He will bring you out of that and he will quiet your heart with his love. Oh, friends, and he dances, he rejoices over us with singing. He loves us. He cares for us. And it is good news. It is good news. And so for you that are listening tonight and you are walking that journey and you struggle as some of our own family members have and do with, with anxiety attacks, with panic attacks, know that the Lord is with you and he goes ahead of you. He will quiet your heart with his love. He loves you. There is no judgment here. We all are walking our journeys. 
And please know that we are here for you. You can call the Counseling Center again. That number is 760-349-1600. You will hear a lovely voice, Bridget Munoz, on the other line, and she will guide and direct you with these handouts, or she will place you in counseling if that's what you would like. If you wanna talk with me or my husband, please just indicate that. And if you need to email us personally, my email address is Pastor Gwen, G-W-E-N, at vfassembly.org. My husband's Pastor Arnold, A-R-N-O-L-D, at vfassembly.org. Oh, how we love you. We just thank the Lord for you. Thank you for being with us tonight for our very first Counseling Moments of Hope. God bless you.